Hi there, it's John, John the Nice Guy Spriggs. Um, I recently did a um, short uh, screencast, uh, a mentoring style screencast, I should add, um, about uh, all sorts of things to do with Ansible and Git and Vagrant and Inspec and things like that. Um, but whilst I was recording that video, uh, a couple of bits and pieces came up and some colleagues of mine uh, called me out on it and said that I'd made some problems and made some errors. So um, this is a hopefully shorter video. Uh, the last one was about an hour and a quarter, so it's quite a long video. But this video is going to be a hopefully shorter video, just quickly kind of running through some of the problems that I um, created last time when I was doing my Git stuff uh, and how you might correct that. So let's get started. So <clears throat> uh, I have a um, Ubuntu Mate uh, virtual machine that I've got set up. Uh, and I am connected into it. And um, in that virtual machine, I have done nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, I've, I've not set Git up. All I've done is literally install Git. Um, and uh, I've installed, uh, I've logged into GitHub because uh, that was a bit of a stumbling block last time. Uh, I've not created any SSH keys. I've not um, done anything funky with um, creating repositories, nothing, absolutely nothing has been done. This is purely just a blank virtual machine. So first thing I'm going to do is going to make, that's not right. You shouldn't have seen that. <laughs> oh dear. It's one of those nights, isn't it? Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a directory, uh, called SC002. <clears throat> so in SC002, uh, I am going to cd to sc002 and I'm going to do git init. So what does git init do? Well, uh, git init creates a directory called git. Uh, and if I ls.git in here, there's a whole load of other stuff. You don't really need to worry too much around this stuff. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I might pull back to some of these bits in either other videos or perhaps a bit later on in this one. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, so, uh, I'm going to create a file uh, by echoing hello world to um, uh, uh, hello.txt, nice and straightforward. Uh, so if I do ls minus l now, I've got that one file there, and ls minus l a minus a, all that does is it just shows all the hidden files, hidden files in Linux or anything that starts with a dot. So sometimes called dot files as well. But so dot git is a hidden file. Um, the this directory and the directory above, they're all dot files as well. So ls minus l shows me, uh, or ls shows me the file that's in there. ls minus l uh, shows me a list with the extended attributes in there. And ls minus la or ls minus a shows me um, all of the files, including the dot files, uh, which is what the a stands for and l as I said, shows me the extended attribute. So if I do ls minus a, it just shows me dot, 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 get, hello, and ls minus la shows me all those things. Yeah. Anyway, so if I do git status, that shows me that I've got no commits yet uh, and that there is an untracked file. So what does git do? Um, git actually um, has three states. Uh, you've got the working directory, which is the bit that you're in. Um, there's a staging area, uh, which is where you add things to, to then finally do your commit. And then you do your git commit at the end, and that adds it to um, the repository. So if I do git add hello.txt, that moves that from uh, untracked to changes to be committed. This is the staging area, sometimes called the cached area. So if I do git um, diff minus minus cache, it shows me what's changed between um, the um, between the repository and the staging area. So this shows me the cached stuff here. So it shows me that I'm about to add a file called hello world, uh, a line to, that says hello world to this point in the file. Uh, and 
the difference between hello in tree B and an empty file dev null in A. And this index, that's the parent that we're going from and what the commit will be when it's committed. So let's do a git commit. Oh dear, I haven't told it who I am. So this is the next thing I wanted to mention. Uh, and this was the bit that broke last time. Um, uh, when you first set a machine up and you haven't set anything to do with Git up, it will try and detect your machine, your, your machine's name, uh, and automatically use that as your um, email address. Uh, and in this case, we don't have a fully qualified domain name. Uh, this machine is called host, which is somewhat inconvenient. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do git config minus minus global minus minus edit. So this loads this file here, slash home slash spriggsj, which is my user, and then dot git config. So this is adding to a, a dot file in my home directory, this dot git config. And I can change these here and it'll up, and it will make that for all of my commits. Now, I'm gonna take out this dot global. So, git config. This path now is in the dot git directory that I was just previously in. So if I edit this file now and add the user, username, uh, and user email to this file, um, it would be specific to me. But I'm not gonna do that. So, this has got here name. I am John Spriggs. Uh, and my email address is John at Spriggs.js. Excellent. Now, if I do a git commit now, it works because it knows who I am. So I can say, uh, this is the initial commit. Fantastic. And if I do a git log, it shows me that this here is the author of that commit. That's me. But hang on a second. I don't want it to be my personal account. I want it to be my work account. Oops, there's a problem. Git config user dot email john dot spriggs at big corp dot example dot com right now this hasn't updated my commit what can i do git commit minus minus amend now reset author so what does this do um, this says, rather than creating a new commit, amend the last one. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to change the author from what it was set to, to what it is now. So let's see what that does. Get log. Haha, -ha. I'm now John Spriggs, john.spriggs at bigcorp.example.com. Now, the interesting thing about this is that you might remember from the last video that I did that this here, A7, A20, A21A, that's six characters there. Um, that's, or even this full 32 character long string. This is the um, signature of that commit. When I change the email address, that updates the commit hash. Interesting. So it means that if you were to try and take credit for somebody else's work, just the act of trying to take that credit for somebody else's work changes the commit hash. Okay, so let's have a quick look. Cat.get config. So we've got our user in this. And cat uh, tilde, which is another way of saying my home directory, dot get config. So this has got my personal address. So this means that what you can do um, is have two or more separate profiles, each profile being a profile for the individual user. So 
you might have one for your personal stuff, one for uh, an open source project you're working on, one for your commercial projects that you're working on. Um, and it's all down to where you have your um, your user file tracked. Okay, so we've done a commit. So we've done our init, we've done our commit. Um, we've talked very briefly about staging. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is branching. So um, I had a quick look around and I tried really hard to find um, a really good video, a uh, really good um, screen capture um, or picture of a fairly typical Git, what they call Git flow. Um, and this is a sort of a copy of um, what's a fairly typical model for Git commits. So this line here is referred to as the master. And this is the one that when you go to places like github.com and you look at repository, typically the um, main repository we're looking at is called the master. So each one of these blobs is a commit. Okay. Um, when you as a, a contributor to that project want to make a change to that project, you do what they call a branch. So you do git checkout so check out branch minus B and then the name of the branch you want to do. Um, <clears throat> and so you might want to do um, check out minus B and then uh, an issue tag or um, a feature request or um, uh, maybe a feature that customers asked for or something like that. Um, so you'll track it down to, you know, you might, you might call the branch the name of what the feature is going to be adding. You might call the branch um, the issue number that you're working towards uh, or the user story you're trying to work to. It all depends on how you keep your project in line. So this is now a branch, a separate branch down here. And you, you might make a series of changes to these branches. Um, and so you get to the point where you've you've made all the changes you need to in, in two commits here in this case and then you change back to this master branch and you do a merge from this branch into this branch so this then means that in this master tree you've got potentially two new commits added at this point um, now depending on how you do this merge um, you either get two commits and a third commit saying that you've merged that in. You might get one commit, and this, that's when you rebate what they do. You, they do what you what they call um, editing history. So you've merged all of the commits that um, are in this branch here down to one commit. But if you're working to this model here where you've branched down to here and you've then created this stuff and you've branched down to here and created this stuff, um, if you do that rebasing, that that, that um, rewriting history so that these two commits become one commit here, then these ones here all get orphaned. They'll get lost in the chain of how this lot's all hung, hung together. Uh, so I would tend to recommend not doing that one not unless the project you're working on tends to work like that um, the third way um, and this is particularly if you've got lots and lots of different forks all going on at the same time um, is you do what they call um, a rebase so what happens is um, the commit log will show uh, these changes having happened out of order for the, anyway there's these three different states um but so ultimately what you'll end up with is this sort of continuum of commits along here and then these branches down here that get forked off into their own branches and then merged in when they're ready to go so here we've got another branch another feature down here um so this line here could be dotted up to here potentially and that would probably make more sense really um, but not 
though they've come they've come off of this line here so perhaps when we branch down here we've done something new and novel and interesting that's different than what we've done up here uh, or perhaps this is a, a hot fix oh my god we've got this thing that we need to commit quickly so either way you do another branch from here to this new feature and this new feature down here and the good thing about this is that whilst the person that wrote this is still merrily making their way along here if you imagine this is a sequential timeline um, this line down here um, these two brand, these two commits happened at the same time um, for whatever reason maybe it's the same day same week whatever but these two commits happened at the same time this one was completed and got merged in but this one had some more work that needed doing to it so these commits all carry on before they merge in and these merge in after this one here has been merged in so you, you might see a really complicated set of branches and forks and stuff like, like that down here now unless between this commit and here um, you've not changed the same set of files as between these two commits this will do what they call a fast forward commit which literally just goes um, uh, I can see all the history that's happened and none of it conflicts uh, so I will just merge everything together and it will just appear on there um, if there's a conflict when you do this merge to here you'll have to show which lines accurate and that'll happen in um there'll be like three lines and in fact what, I, what i'll try and do is i'll try and orchestrate a situation where you see this merge conflict in a second um so you get th three chevrons the name of the branch that's coming f that you got the conflict from the thing that's changed then you'll get three equal signs saying that it's gone back to master to the to the previous commit from both of these and then uh, you might see uh, what's changed in this file that can't be in this commit here that can't be merged in uh, and then three chevrons again um, so once you've fixed all of those so you might say, oh, I want to pick this one and not that one. Or you might want to have both of them in there. Uh, or you might want to have that one and not this one. Uh, but you'll make these three, do these changes. You'll do a git add and then a git commit. And that will show as a mer as a conflict resolution commit effectively. And then a merge. Most of the time, particularly if you're working on disparate files, uh, if this is a large repository, or if you're working in different places in the file, you won't tend to have these merge conflicts but sometimes they do happen anyway so this is if you're committing from forks to master and the same happens in the github model um, where this might be on one uh, one repository completely say for example um, you know it's a repository under my uh, one of my brand you know screencasts project um, and then uh, you as a contributor comes along uh, and so We'll, call, we'll refer to me as my username so um, you create you click on the edit button or the fork button and it creates that repository it copies or clones this repository here uh, into a new um, structure so whereas it's gone from screencasts uh, sc002 it'll go to uh, john the nice guy sc002 i'll make my changes either in my branch or in, my, in the master branch and then I'll do what they call a pull request and a pull request is where I'm saying I would like the owner of that that um, that repository there to accept my changes and pull them from my branch my forked tree into their branch on their tree that's a pull request uh, if you're working with GitLab uh, you might see it referred to as a merge request same effective end state it's just different terminology anyway so let's go back to our um to, uh, to our file so we've got uh, our readme hello world fantastic uh so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do git checkout so helps if i can spell 
minus B, and then the name of the branch that I want to check out. So um, uh, SC001 feature 001. Uh, and I'm going to um, say uh, no, no, um, run me.sh. So I'm going to create a very simple bash file. Hello world dot text plus x run me get status. So we've got a new untracked file. Uh, git add run me fab get status. This is now in our staging area, so I'll do git commit minus m um, added feature zero zero one. Run me.sh. Fab. So I've got two lines here. Um, this head here is the tip of the branch that I am working on at the moment. So I'm currently working on head on this branch here. If I do git checkout uh, master, which is the name of this branch here, and do git log. So two things to note. So here we've got our head pointing to master. Uh, and the other thing is, if I do an ls, that run me sh has gone. Git branch. So we can see if we do git branch, we've got two branches, sc001, f001, um, and master. So let's pull or merge, git merge, sc001, f001 in. So that's done this fast forward, like I said. Um, it's been able to merge this file into here. So now if I do get log, um, we can see that we're on the head of master, uh, but it's also in parity with SC001. And if I do get check out SC001, do get log, we now see we're pointing to the head of this branch, but that is in parity with master. Fantastic. Okay. Get check out master. So once we've finished with this branch, we don't need it anymore. So we do get branch minus D SC001, F001. And that says I've deleted that branch because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to do something else now, get check out minus B, SC001, F002. Switch to a new branch, uh, nano, um, don't run need SH, bin, bash, false. Match mod plus X, don't run me, get status. So again, we've got this in the staging area, get add, don't run me, get commit minus m uh, added anti feature f002 right um if i check 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 out master again get branch so we, we removed uh, branch f001 with this git branch minus d um We've got this feature, the anti feature 002. I suddenly thought, oh, I don't want to work on that one anymore. Get branch minus D F002. Uh, so, for example, the customer doesn't like that anymore. If I do get branch minus D, it says, ah, this branch is not merged. That's no good. If you're sure you want to delete it, you have to run a different command. It's just changing the case of this letter here from minus lowercase d to minus uppercase d. So if I do that now, that's deleted that branch. And if I do an ls, it's not there, get log, it's not there. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna do get a checkout sc002, f003. Oops. Um, 
I forgot to add the minus B there. So without that minus B, it doesn't create a new branch. Uh, what you can do, if I do that, get checkout. Uh, I can check out individual commits like this, uh, which is in a detached head state. So get log. That shows that this is where I am here, pointing to this branch here. And if I do an ls, that run me file's gone. So get checkout master takes me back to the head of that branch. So get log shows that I'm back up here. Uh, get branch, what have we got? Get checkout minus B SC 002F 003. So switched to a new branch, feature three. Uh, and I'm going to edit uh, Hello World. So I'm going to say, Hello World, how are you? Right. Whilst I've been doing this, get checkout. Master. Um, oh, hang on a sec, I forgot to and then commit that. Get status. So, one of the things that you'll notice when I did that git checkout there, I actually said that this file is modified. Um, so, if I cat hello again, fab git checkout master. Uh, so, if I cat hello there, it's carried this change back to master because it wasn't committed into the tree. Um, and so if I go back to the SC00 blah, 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 get add hello, get commit minus M. Minus M on that git commit there just means um, add this message. It's usually used for one line. You can do multiple lines, but it gets complicated. So I'm going to do a one liner that says um, tweaked hello.txt. Right, get checkout master. Um, one of the reasons why the words keep populating so quickly is because I'm using the tab key to also complete stuff. So that's why when I do get checkout, if I do get che, it doesn't do anything. If you do double tab, it shows you what the options are. Doesn't work for every command, but it does usually work with git. Uh, so that's why when I do a K and then sorry a C and hit tab, it finishes off the word for me anyway. So uh, so git log in um, master branch. Haven't got this tweaked hello dot text, but so uh, whilst uh, one user is working on this F zero zero three feature get checkout minus B SC 0 F004 new feature raised by a separate user they're saying they don't want it to say hello 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 world how are you uh, and instead they want hello to say hello world I hope you're okay get add hello get commit minus M Hello.txt. Right. Get checkout master. Right. So, two users working on the same feature, separate features at the same time, but it's touching the same line. So, git merge sc002f003. So, what this is going to do is it's going to try and pull in that first one, which was hello world, how are you? Fantastic, fast forwarded, because between master and that feature three, there's no conflict. Second user comes along and they want to merge their branch in. Oh dear, we can't do that because there's a conflict. And if I do get status now, it shows that both parts in the unmerged paths are in and a conflict state. So if I do a git diff, it shows me here's head, which is the current state of the master, and then here is the change that it wants to merge in. So if I edit hello, you can see here. So at this point, you as editor and merger of this file 
need to look at these two things and say, um, which one of these do I want to keep? So in fact, I as a nice guy, hopefully, can say I want to take both statements and put them in together. Control X, yes to write, hit enter. So now if I do git status, it says they're both modified. So at git add hello, git status, changes to be committed. So all of our conflicts are fixed because we edited the file, we removed that, that, and that, and then we committed it in. If I'd decided that actually I wasn't sure which one of these two I wanted to fix, I could have done a git merge abort and it would have stopped it from running, but it didn't. I fixed it, I'm ready to commit. So git commit minus m. Let's see what happens when we don't do minus m. Let's see. So this is merge branch. So this is saying it was merging in this and it says it looks like you might be committing a merge. If this is not correct, please remove this file and try again. Well, no, I am trying to commit that file. So merge branch that fixing the conflict. It's always useful to put nice and complete um, commit messages um, because the more you add to your commit messages, the more chance somebody later on has got of going through that and finding out, particularly if you've changed um, uh, your ticketing system. So if you go from one ticketing system to another ticketing system, you don't bring all the ticket references with you, your feature reference numbers that you were using all get lost. So uh, merge branch, F blah, 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 fixing conflict. Excellent. So I can write that one. And if I do a get log now, here's what you see. So here's my initial commit. Here's where I added feature 001. Feature 002 is gone um, because um, it was an anti-feature. We decided not to merge it. But feature 3 is there, tweaked hello. And feature 4 is there, tweaked hello. And in fact, if I do get log minus p, so the minus p shows you what, what the patches were each time. So uh, here's our first one uh, where we, sorry, no, it's not. Where's our first one? Here's our initial commit. Hello world, fantastic. Then um, here's our second commit where we add our run sh. Then here's the feature three commit. We've changed hello world to hello world, how are you? And feature four changes hello world to hello world, hope you're okay. And then when we've done our final commit, we fixed our conflict. Now it doesn't actually show you what the conflict change is there, which is a bit annoying. Um, but at least there we can see, oh, probably because we've included all three of these pieces when we've done this merge. But what you can also see there is you can see the merge of the two bits that were fixed. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven parts of that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we've also got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven from that commit. So you can see what the merge was that was merged in there. So what can I do now? I can do get branch and I can do get branch minus D, SC002, F003, SC002, F004, get branch. So I've done a very quick kind of scan through of these bits and pieces. I hope what I've done has made some sense to you. Um, and I just want to remind you that I am John the Nice Guy Spriggs, uh, and that if you want to reach out to me and tell me that there's something you want me to look at next or work on next or uh, change, implement differently, run differently, run something in a different way, then you can reach out to me. I'm on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and um, I'm on Secure Scuttle, but although if you want to get to me on that, you need to come uh, through my blog. Uh, I'm on Keybase. Basically, not 
every social media, but a fair chunk of them. You will find me on there. Um, I'm also on both YouTube and Library, um, and uh, I'm on as John the Nice Guy on both of those. So please feel free to look out for me. And if there's anything more that you want from me, please just uh, give me a shout. So until the next time, thank you very much. Bye-bye.